Hello and welcome back uh, to Quick Tips. Um, I will try and make them as quick as possible. Um, and you can see my face today, which uh, probably makes a bit of a change. So um, anyway, hello all to you. Um, we're going to have a look at um, the hexatonic, um, some hexatonic sets here. So I've got two, 6Z19B, bit of a mouthful, isn't it? And then 620. Um, 620 is known as the augmented scale in jazz. Um, thank you for pointing that out, Brett. Um, so, um, yes, uh, but 6Z19B is subtly different um, because the sequence of intervals with minor second, minor third, minor second, which in 620 is just a sequence of all of them alternating, uh, is disrupted uh, at the end. Uh, the easiest way to see this is that we've got a C major triad and we've also got a D flat major triad and they're just um, pasted together. Uh, so I'm just going to put D flat here and make that red as well just so it's pretty clear. Um, and the reason for that chord uh, or the, the importance of that chord is that it's one of the Starry Night chords. So in the sequence in Star Wars where you, the, the camera pans down um, and, you know, you see all the starry night before the, the, the f sort of first bit of action. Um, so we, we definitely have that um, chord there. Um, and then it ends up on uh, a 419B. Now, the, the interesting thing is that, you know, those those two hexatonic scales are very much part of John Williams's style. They're, they're slightly different. Um, and, you know, often I mention that 419B comes from 620, which it does, um, because we can look at it and it, it still does. Um, but uh, it also comes from 6Z19B as well. So we've got our C major chord uh, with an A flat. Uh, so 419 is a major chord with a flat 6. It's also a, a major 7th as well. Uh, but mainly it's used in that sort of configuration um, because because the evidence is that it is used in that configuration. Um, not really um, that sort of uh, James Bond, um, John Barry sting at all. Um, so um, big deal. But the, the thing is that um, what's interesting is that this scale is also a subset of another scale. So if I just sort of do this... And let's complete it with, I don't know, let's make it complete with a B natural, because that seems right. That sounds familiar. Hmm. So, um, and, and sometimes you can go on these sort of um, interesting journeys with this. So if I put the, let's reset this. And this is sort of, you know, example of how I, you know, do all of these analyses, um, really. Let's put in the notes. So we've got... C and D flat, E and F, G, A flat. So that gives us 6Z19. It will automatically just give us the, the prime form of it. It won't give us the normal form. But it's worth checking this normal form, 014578, to see whether there are two different versions. 014578, are, there are two different versions. Um, of course, they all amount to the same thing because the... the the whole point of prime form is to reduce it to the smallest possible distance between notes going from left to right in an, in an order. Uh, but um, what's interesting is that um, we can see that by adding a B natural on the end of it, it makes this into 722. And if we scroll up to 722, which I'm doing, we'll find that this is the double harmonic minor scale and in fact if you click on it wikipedia has very um sort of conveniently given the exact scale that we've written out as well so c d flat e yes f g a flat f g a flat b and then c the double harmonic major scale it says here um and then it gives the various modes um, so the fourth mode of which, in other words, if you started on the fourth degree of the scale, that one, that's the Hungarian minor. 
Uh, so it's the raised fourth that makes it Hungarian minor. So it's a really interesting thing because, again, it's a link, or even uh, actually this chord is a link between lots of different sorts of scales. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just an interesting thing. And it just means that when you're writing, you can use slight variants of, you know, this sort of 620. So, you know, we can do all sorts of things. So let's let's say I start on a set of a semitone. Let's do a sort of mode two. Like that. And then I want it to start on middle C because I want it to be C and then E flat. Um, so let's try that. So shift T. Down a minor second. Always click off that. I'm using Spadius. Um, and... There we've got a sort of interesting uh, little bit here where ah major chord and a flat six which is not immediately apparent from uh, the, the sort of normal uh, sorry from the prime form um, of this uh, 620 hexatonic scale so it's worth really exploring these scales yourself really sort of trying to work out all the possibilities of them and, you know, because it's symmetrical, there are very limited possibilities, um, whereas this one has a few more possibilities, because if you add that sort of B natural onto it and make it a seven note scale, so this is now 722, um, it means that we've got um, even more possibilities. The other thing uh, which can be quite useful is that if you have your set calculator, and I will put this in the channel description just so you've, you, you've got access to it. It's just on, you know, if you just Wikipedia pitch class set calculator or PC set calculator, it will come up. Um, the, the interesting thing is, um, let's take that off, uh, resubmit it, get 6Z19. You can usually work out what are the supersets it's from. So it gives you um, the different sets. So 722 is the one we've got. But 732 is also, that's just a harmonic minor scale as well. So um, it's interesting that, you know, those notes appear as part of other scales as well. So you, you can see the interrelationship between the two. And we can also do subsets. So I can go tetrachords. Um, and then hopefully if I just do that, yeah, it will give us, in fact, I didn't need to do that because it just automatically came up to this subset thing. Uh, we can see that there are different versions of these things. We've got 418, we've got 419. Let's just double check because it can get very confusing. <laughs> 419, great. 419, major chord, flat six. I'm okay. I know where I am now. Um, but I just wanted you to see the connectivity between, you know, different sorts of hexatonic sets. So 6 head 19, that's in Starry Night, but it leads to 417B, that sort of sci-fi chord fine then we can start adding notes and then we're getting into the meat and, uh, and bones of um you know that cue from the empire strikes back uh, imperial probe droid but i think that's probably just enough to be getting on with one of the things i would suggest perhaps is when you're exploring these really just um have fun with just the scale before you write anything and then set yourself a target of going okay let's just write a small piano piece um, for a, a child <laughs> who's sort of, like, let's say, eight, nine, ten years old with small hands, so that you're writing a little piano piece with two, uh, you know, a treble stave and a bass stave um, with just two independent lines in counterpoint. Just see how it goes. See what happens. See, see, explore the, the intervallic relationships between things. Um, I just think it's a good exercise to just get accustomed uh, to the scale without the pressure of thinking, oh, I've got to write a, a huge orchestral piece. Um, so, for example, uh, to demonstrate that, well, let's just start it. Um, so we've got those two chords, uh, two scales here. I'm doing this in real time. We've got um, a gardening visitor outside today, so sorry about the noise outside, but here we go. So I'll, I'll probably not do this too much. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so you might sort of start with a single melody and go on in time. So let's just make this, I don't know, crotchet equals, what should we do? 72, something like that. Let's give it a time signature, 4-4, four, four, always good. Um, 
And also I quite like not necessarily starting on a keynote. So I'm just using one transposition of the scale. So of course there are 11 transpositions of it. I could start on any of those notes. Uh, and also I could choose which one to, to have as well. I quite like that. So I was just starting with, um, yeah. Let's just do that. Let's make sure it's, so left hand, right hand. So maybe, yeah, maybe I can just, uh, I've realized I didn't set up a, a proper piano stave here. I've just got two uh, random staves. So let's make that, um, yeah. Whoops. Let's not give the game away too early. And then always good to repeat it. Hmm, do I want to repeat it? No, I don't. I'm going to just change it slightly, uh, move those notes up. Notice I haven't actually gone out of the um, scale. I'm just using it to get ideas. So. Yeah, so I think um, in terms of counterpoint, just sort of giving you a broad start in terms of how I might go about it. Um, and then I sometimes just um, concentrate on one line at a time. Let's try and swap it over. Use John Williams's favourite trick of starting with a second inversion chord. Um, let's just listen to that. Yeah. Um, be dum dum. So I'm using that, I'll probably change the end. Actually, no, I won't. I'm going to allow uh, that to take over because um, with good counterpoint, you're um, allowing the other part to take center stage, almost as if the spotlights moved from one player to another, in this case, from one hand to another. Um, And that's where we'll probably end because the lawnmower is going off. But I hope you get an idea about how that sounds um, and um, how we can use just even one scale just to create um, interesting pitch material that we can then exploit later on. Thank you very much for listening and uh, see you next time.